It has seemed to me that the sun was not shining the same way it used to. My memory tells me the sun was not quite as harsh in yesteryears. A bit more yellowish, perhaps. Oh, to be sure, it still burnt my skin back then. But it did not seem to be as severe as today's sun. Not quite so unholy. It was and is the source of biological life in our solar system. And days were still hot in the old days before the changes came. A cool breeze was always welcome on a hot summer's day. And all summers were hot, of course. But they were different, too. Much different than they are now. And the days seemed longer. Uh, he must be getting old, they say to me. No, it isn't that. The sun really did shine differently, and the days really were longer. They were very long, and a year took a long time. It was hard to remember on January 1st what you did the previous January 1st. Other than celebrate, of course. We celebrated the new year because it was new. And while new could be scary, new was good, too. It was full of endless possibilities. Now, there is no more new. I remember eating an orange as a child. It was so fresh and so vibrant and so bursting with delicious flavor, bursting with the sun. And then one day, the oranges changed. The color was a little different. When you peeled it, the inside had some strange little growth at the top of the orange, as if there were small sections growing on top of the larger sections, like an orange inside of an orange. I'm sure you've seen that, but they didn't used to be that way. And the taste, that delicious taste, was gone, and it never came back. I didn't think too much of it at the time I was a child, although through the many years I have missed the real oranges. And now all food is becoming more and more the same. Flavor is lost. Color is lost. Lushness is lost. It all conforms. And natural flavor is added. It is bland and we must excite our taste buds with spices, which usually means MSG. And the carrots have an underlying taste of mold. I taste it. Have you tasted the mold? I know what I taste, but they once were so sweet. Just like the buildings, the beautiful old buildings. They've torn down so many of them now. There were buildings that had marble staircases and floors with balconies and turrets and spires. And you could smell the old wood. And the windows were majestic. I know because I have been in many of those buildings myself personally. Most of them are gone now, and new box-like buildings were built in their place. Then those were torn down and rebuilt. That's what they keep doing now. They tear down the paper buildings and houses, and then rebuild new paper buildings and houses. Ah, uh, you must be getting old, they say to me. Nothing is built to last anymore because there isn't any money in that. Actually, there isn't any money anymore either. There was a time when money really meant something. Now it isn't worth the paper it's printed on. And people roll their eyes if they're standing in line behind you and you are paying for things with pieces of paper. Because plastic chips now contain the units of nothingness. And isn't that more convenient? To have all of your nothing in one spot? I had a hamster once. It was a long time ago. He happily ran on his wheel. He ran so fast that thing flew. And he seemed so happy running and skipping along. Then he would hop off, eat some food, and then go and run again. I was so glad I had the foresight to put that wheel in his cage so he could get some exercise and be healthy. Because, you know, living in a cage isn't very fun, I'm told. It's a good thing he never found out. When he died, 
I gently tossed him into the ocean for a burial at sea. But a seagull swooped down and stole his little body away. As I recall, there weren't many ticks in those days, not like today. Also, they didn't carry terrible diseases, as we are told the ticks of today carry. You can go and get your blood tested now. And if you're feeling awfully enough and they have no explanation, which they usually do not have, the tests will come back as positive for Lyme disease. Well, you were warned not to go out into nature, weren't you? Not directly, of course, because that might make you think. And we wouldn't want you to think. Nothing is direct anymore. Flowers were prettier then, too. In the old days, under the old sun, we didn't have fluorescent colors. So when you saw what amounted to a fluorescent color in a flower, it almost knocked you over. The brilliance was uncanny. Oh, how the hungry eyes searched them out eagerly every spring. What a treat. I also remember, getting back to food, I must be hungry, that meals truly satisfied back in the day. And they satisfied a lot more than taste. After a good meal, you felt really good. I mean, really good. There was a sense of oneness and wholeness. There was a connection to the world, and you knew you were part of it. Now it's just about taste sensations. Although, if you have the right app, you can find out exactly how many empty calories are in each and everything you shovel into your mouth. With a shovel, you do it. Ah, you must be getting old, they say to me. And there were picnics in parks in long, long days of children running and playing, in adults grilling food and drinking and gossiping and drinking some more. But it was all good, and really it was a great deal of fun. When you came home from a day like that, you were so incredibly tired. But remember that those were different days under a different sun on a different earth that traveled much slower. Now you barely get to a place and it's time to think about how you will pack up, about strategic exits through grueling traffic. Ah, you must be getting old, they say to me. People used to have butterfly collections and no one hated them for it, imagine that. There were also lots of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and high on the list of their lessons was morality. In fact, if you are lucky enough to have the old paper books of the Scouts from many decades ago, which I have, you could read on the clumsy paper, not plastic, about morality. It was number one, absolutely number one. Now, emotions are number one, especially the inability to control them and political correctness, of course especially if it will start the downward spiral of destruction. And nothing ever gets done. Have you noticed diseases are not cured anymore, only managed? New electronics become old before they hit the shelf, and the newer ones on the horizon will bring more of the same big nothing. New video games, new movies, new songs, new artwork, new books. It doesn't matter because they all have the same old theme. The theme of the victim. No matter how evil or grotesque in his thoughts he might be, the victim must be saved at all costs, including millions of other lives, because he is the sacred victim. The stories are so predictable and so nauseating. And should one dare to be truly new and unique, it will be buried under a hundred feet of cement by the end of the day, by the end of the hour even. I'm tired of this game. I'm tired of people being sad. And I'm tired of watching them being used, including myself. I'm tired of being told who the enemy is and whom I should hate, especially when it turns out to be me. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of lawlessness. And I'm tired of ignorance excelling among the exhausted population. 
I'm tired of beauty being twisted into a gammy-handed troll. Mostly, I think I'm just tired of being tired. And of being in limbo, in that land between lands where you suffer for sins you never committed. Walking into inmates with a blank stare, you ask them, What are you in for? They look at you as if you were a jigsaw puzzle of a thousand pieces that fell out of a box all over the floor of a busy coffee shop. They have no idea they're imprisoned, and you realize it's too late for them. Well, it's not too late for me. When things go wrong, I go back to the beginning. That's the only way to fix problems. You can't repair a hole in a garment by taking two stitches in the middle of the hole and calling it a day. No, you go back and you reinforce that seam, that boundary, that definition. First of all, I'm not listening anymore to people who tell me that life in the past was just as awful as it is today, and it's my selective memory at fault. That is a bold-faced lie. Oh, they'll point out this problem and that problem, this social injustice and that one. As if to say, because things weren't perfect in the past, because they weren't pure heaven, we must throw it all out and forget about it and, of course, obey their manipulative plot. Nope, I'm not doing that. When things go wrong, you go back to the beginning. The only hard part about that is making sure that you're really at the beginning and not some rabbit hole with endless passages that lead nowhere, placed there by greedy merchants who want everything you've got, including your soul. In his book, The Four Agreements, which I'll link below, Miguel Ruiz calls all the things going on around us, all the rules, the beliefs, laws, religions, cultures, governments, all of the insanity, he calls this the dream of the planet. Each person has their own personal dream that includes all the things they have agreed to believe and run their life by. And then all of those billions of personal dreams in the world combined are what he calls the dream of the planet. That would be society. That's what we have agreed to believe is real and abide by, agreed to believe. Even though we can perceive millions of things happening simultaneously, Miguel Ruiz says that you can use your attention to focus on what you want to perceive. You bring what you want into the foreground and the rest stays in the background, fading more and more if you can maintain your focus. Of course, the powers that be know this and they constantly try to hook your attention and bring it where they want it to be, thus bringing your energy and your creativity over to them for their purposes. Miguel Ruiz's four agreements are these. Number one, be impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take anything personally. Number three, don't make assumptions. And number four, always do your best. And then he explains exactly how to do all of that. With these four agreements, he says you can eliminate a good 90% of the emotional upset in your life. This is how you get back into the captain's seat where you belong. Even if chaos is going on around you, you're not a part of it. And that's a beginning. As I said above, when things go wrong, you go back to the beginning. You go back to simple foods you make yourself, to elbow grease and getting your hands dirty and then clean again, to simple music, to quiet rooms with candlelight or oil lamps, to a small fire to warm your feet, to car rides in the country on a Sunday afternoon, to long walks down dirt roads with no destination. Ah, you must be getting old, they say to me. You stop immersing yourself and bathing your consciousness in a constant diet of the sad and sickly dream of the planet. You say no to the false flags and half-told stories and the hidden lies 
and all the manipulative drones who tell them. You stop looking for approval from others, trying to get likes by spewing the latest raunchy nonsense that deep inside you know is raw. And above all, you give the electronic devices a rest, a long, long rest. You go back to a life with simple chores done by hand, like washing and ironing and, and bread making, and you have simple meals eaten in peace. Do you remember that? And you spend free time reading a book, a paper book, or perhaps painting and creating art, or making a gift for a friend. You gently nurse yourself through the withdrawal symptoms you will surely feel as you pull yourself out of the addiction of the planet. As you clear the cobwebs from your mind and claw your way back to the real world. I am not fooled. I know what I know. My memory is not faulty or warped. In fact, it is crystal clear. Much clearer than what passes for today's so-called memories which are a mishmash of implanted fake history. Yep, just about everything you learned about history is false. Better take a selfie or you'll forget. But what will you forget anyway? There has to be something worth remembering. Oh, how I wish I could give you one of those oranges. Ah, you must be getting old, they say to me. I am getting older every day, it's true. Yet, paradoxically, I am not as old as I used to be.